Hello friends, this video on life processes part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now let us look at the first part of nutrition that is how do organisms obtain food. So from where the different types of living organisms get their food. So let us see what are the ways by which organisms get their food. Now there are two modes of nutrition. So what do I mean by modes of nutrition? That means the way by which an organism gets, it, gets its food. So there are basically two broad classifications of modes of nutrition. The first is autotrophic and the second one is heterotrophic. Now what is autotrophic? Auto. The word auto itself means self. So that means this word auto means self. So autotrophic means the organism will prepare its own food. So it is self-dependent. The organism will not depend on anybody else for its food. Similarly heterotrophic. Hetero means others. So the, this, these kind of organisms will depend on others for their food. So broadly there are two ways of obtaining food. One is preparing our own food and the other one is obtaining our food from some other organism. Right? So now let us look at the autotrophic and the heterotrophic mode of nutrition one by one. Now the autotrophic nutrition, as I said, so these organisms will prepare their own food. Now there are two classifications in this also. Now what are the organisms which prepare their own food? The best examples are the green plants. How do they prepare their own food? They prepare their own food by the process of photosynthesis. Right? We have spoken about all these things in class 9th also. So photosynthesis means in presence of sunlight in with the help of the green pigment called chlorophyll which is present in the leaves of the plants, they will prepare their food. So that is known as, they are known as photosynthetic. So some autotrophic animals can be photosynthetic. That means they prepare food in presence of sunlight. Photo means light. So they prepare food in presence of sunlight with the help of chlorophyll, right? And the other kind of autotrophic organisms are chemosynthetic. What is the word chemo? Chemo is derived from the word chemical. So these organisms use chemical energy which is released during oxidation of organic compounds to prepare their food. So the first kind of organisms since they are photosynthetic and photo means light so they use light energy to prepare food and chemosynthetic chemo means chemical so they use chemical energy to prepare their food so these animals together prepare their own food whether it is photosynthetic or chemosynthetic examples are plants some algae and bacteria so plants fall under the category of photosynthetic so under the category of photosynthetic, we can give the examples of plants. Under the category of chemosynthetic, we can uh, consider some bacteria. For example, there are some specific bacteria like sulfur bacteria or nitrosomonas bacteria, which is generally found in the soil. These kind of organisms are chemosynthetic. That means they prepare their own food with the help of chemical energy. So this is all about autotrophic nutrition. Let us now look at the heterotrophic nutrition. Heterotrophic nutrition means these organisms depend on others for their food. Examples, animals, humans, fungi. So animals is a very uh, general term under which we, you will have so many different types of organisms. Right? So all animals including human beings, fungi, they are all heterotrophic. So they, they all depend on others for their food. So if you take the examples of us human beings, so many of you might think that why even we prepare our own food. We have seen our moms preparing food in the kitchen. So she is preparing our food. So we are preparing our own food. So we should be autotrophic. But that is not how it is. We are preparing food. We are actually what we are doing in the kitchen is that we are actually modifying the food materials in a tastier form or in a consumable form. But from where are we getting those raw materials? which we use in the kitchen. For example, what do we cook? We cook the vegetables which we obtain from plants or those who are vegetarian they cook meat which we obtain from animals or we prepare egg 
which again we obtain from animals. So whatever raw materials which we use for our food, we obtain them either from plants or animals. So that means we are also heterotrophic. Correct? So now heterotrophic also can be classified into many different types. The first one is saprophytic. The word sapro itself means dead. The term sapro means dead. So saprophytic mode is the mode wherein the organism feed on dead and decomposed matter. So saprophytic, in saprophytic mode of nutrition, it the organism obtains its food from dead and decomposed matter. So from dead, the organism will actually feed on dead plants and animals. And the example for, of saprophyte is fungi. So fungi are the saprophytes. They feed on dead and decayed objects. The next one is parasitic. What is parasitic? Parasitic means that some, there are some organisms which live inside the body of another organism and obtain its food from that organism. Let us look at this example. You would have heard that many people uh, have worms inside their stomach. So they got some stomach infection because of the presence of some worms. So what are these worms? These worms are also living organisms but they are living inside our body and they are getting their food from our body right so they are also heterotrophic but they in order to get their food they are living inside another organism's body so they are known as parasitic right so examples of parasitic would be plasmodium the malarial parasite what is pa malarial parasite when a mosquito bite the malaria is generally caused by mosquito bite so what happens when the mosquito bites us it actually transfers this plasmodium parasite into our blood so now the plasmodium parasite stays inside our body it gets its nutrients from our body and cause a disease called malaria in our body so another example of parasitic would be lice the rice which is present in our hair, it obtains nutrition from our body. So they are, these are all examples of parasitic organisms. Not only plasmodium, there are many kind of worms which also stay inside the body of another organisms. The third one is holozoic. What is holozoic? Holozoic means intake of complex organic matter as food. That means there are some organisms which take complex food complex organic matter is taken as food the best example is human beings what do we eat we eat things like rice wheat right or uh, bread or uh, meat so if you look at them they are all complex things they are not i mean we do not take glucose as food glucose is something which is very simple but now those simple things combine together to form complex things and we we take those complex things as food so what happens is that let us suppose if we take in rice as i mentioned before also the cells inside our body cannot directly utilize that rice for energy so that rice since it is a complex matter it has to it has needs to be broken down into simpler forms and what are those simpler forms simpler forms are like glucose which make the carbohydrates glucose will combine together and it will form all complex molecules to form very complex carbohydrates similarly proteins when we talk of proteins they are made up of the basic units of protein are the amino acids so many amino acids will combine together and then they will form proteins right similarly fats fats are again formed by many fatty acids so you would have studied about the structure of all these things in your chemistry. If you want to know more about the structure of these kind of things like carbohydrates, proteins or fats, you can refer to the video on biomolecules on chemistry class 12. Just for your information. So basically holozoic means the animals will take in complex organic matter as their food. And the best examples of holozoic animals are human beings. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.